So combinatorial analysis is, what did you say the definition was? Uh, the study of finite. And then uh, com countable structures. And countable structures. OK, uh, good. So yeah, we'll cover uh, the principle of counting, uh, permutations of objects, and then combinations uh, of those objects. So uh, the principle of counting is basically, suppose there happens to be a sequence of events that's going to happen, event one, then event two, then event three. And uh, each one of those are independent of each other. So if you wanted to know how many different ways can all those events occur, it would be the number of ways event one can happen times the number of ways two times the number of ways three, and so on. So for example, um, if you said, how many different ways can we make license plates? And let's say the rules in a certain state for a license plate was the first two characters are letters, and then the next three are numbers. I know, like here, it's, you can mix them up. But, and let's say, so every, every license plate had to have exactly five characters. The first two are letters, the last three are numbers, and then there's a special rule that says the first digit of the three numbers must not be zero. So how many different license plates could there be? So the first event, really the first letter, could be 26 possibilities. So we don't have capital letters and small letters. And then the next one, since you, whatever letter uses the first one, doesn't get removed from the set. You can use it again. So you could have a license plate A followed by an A. So there's 26 different ways the second letter could come out. Then the question is, how many different ways can the numbers come out? Well, the first number, we have a special rule that says no zeros allowed. So it's really 1 through 9. And then the next two numbers could include 0, 0 through 9. So there's 10 possibilities. So for license plates like that, you could just count up all the different possibilities by treating each of the uh, characters in the license plate as a separate event occurring, and then just put them together. Um, so in that case, it would be you know, 608,400 possible combinations of those types of, of license plate numbers. Okay. Um, so what we'll start to we'll start to notice of patterns of this and other types of examples where we want to use what we call the factorial notation. Has that come up in any other uh, math class or computer science class? Uh, Pre-calc. Oh, okay. Um, okay, so the idea of when you, if you wanted to know what is the value of the factorial, what we'll call the factorial, we'll, we'll denote that by saying a number followed by an exclamation point. What that means is if you took all the positive integers from 1 all the way up to that number and you multiplied them all together, that would be the factorial of that number. So like for example, you say what is 4 factorial? So 4 factorial means 1 times 2 times 3 times 4. As soon as you get to the last number, you stop. So 1 times 2 is 2 times 3 is 6. Whoa! This would be 24. Sorry about that. <laughs> Let me change that right now. Okay. So 4 factorial should be 24. Okay. And then we notice that the factorial of any number, like the factorial of uh, n, is really equal to, we could define it recursively as n times the factorial of the previous number. So for example, 4 factorial could be thought of as 3 factorial times 4. And 5 factorial would be 4 factorial then times 5. So 5 factorial would be 24 times 5. Right, because it's 1 times 2 times 3 times 4, which is 24. And then multiply that by 5. So 24 times 5 would be 120, would be 5 factorial. So using this recursive definition that a number is equal, a, a number factorial is equal to the number times the previous number's factorial, um, we get to an interesting question, and it's kind of done for convenience. What is 0 factorial? Well, that's not really defined, because Zero factorial means all the numbers starting at one and going all the way up to zero, multiplying them all together. But there are no numbers from one all the way up to zero. But to stick with this recursive definition, we're going to set zero factorial equal to one. 
So it's just something we kind of use so we can say that one factorial is actually equal to one times the previous number's factorial. So if this was a one, then this statement would hold. So it really doesn't have any intrinsic meaning, zero factorial equals one, but it helps us with our, our recursive definition. Okay. So examples of where we might be able to use something like this is suppose uh, you were given the letters A, B, and C. Um, you were given the letters A, B, and C as a set. So almost think of it like you have a, it's popularly used in urn in these probability combinatorial questions. You have an urn filled with balls in them and the balls have labels on them, A, B, and C. So let's say you had three balls in an urn, one had A on it, one had B on it, one had C on it. The idea is if you, if you pick one, you can't pick that one again. So, um, so if you were asked the question, how many ways can you arrange the letters A, B, and C? You were given the letters A, B, and C. So you can't say A, A, B. You can't use A twice is, is really what I'm saying. So how many different ways can you arrange them? So you could create a set of all the arrangements of them. And this would be like you know, A, B, C, A, C, D. So really, these two are the ones that start with A, and then B and C are swapped. These two are the ones that start with B, and then A and C get swapped. And these are the ones that start with C, and then A and B get swapped. So there's really six different ways of arranging three letters. So the answer would be six, and we notice that's also three factorial. Um, and so let's try to add, you know, say to ourselves, ask ourselves, if we were to have N letters, and you ask, what are all the different ways you can arrange all the letters? Well, you have to use all the letters and you can't duplicate letters. Would that always equal n factorial? Well, in this case, we're saying, how many ways can we choose the first letter out of A, B, and C? How many possible choices can we make for a first letter? Three. So there's three different ways to do it. Now, once we've picked one, let's say we picked B as our first letter. Now we couldn't possibly make this, 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 or this. We can only make these two. How many different ways can we choose a second letter once we've already picked out a first letter? Two. Two, the, the number just before that one. And then once we've picked, let's say we pick B followed by A, and now how many ways can we pick our last letter? There's just one left. So really it's a sequence of three events, and the, right, the first event is pick the first letter, the second event is pick the second letter from the remaining two letters, and the third one is pick the final letter from that remaining one letter. So how many different ways can we do that? Like our original, our original question, our original counting principle, if you have a sequence of events and there's three ways to do the first one and two ways to do the second one and one way to do the third one, then how many different ways are there? Six, it would be three times two times one. So we start to realize that that if you were given a question of this nature where you're given a set of items and you're asked how many different ways can you arrange them where you have to include all of them. So we can't just say, well, I'll take A and B and throw C out. That's one arrangement. If, if you took an arrangement where you have to use all of them, it would, you'd have no choice but to have, you have three choices for the first one, two for the second, one for the third, which would be three times two times one. So it would be, um, that's where factorial comes in. So, what are the number of choices? 3 times 2 times 1 is 6, which would be n factorial. So, if you were given 26 letters, like if you were given the alphabet and you said, how many different ways can we arrange this set? How many unique ways can we do that? Which they call a permutation of the set. That would be 26 factorial, which would be a huge number. But, but so, if you were asked, you know, given 26 letters in the alphabet, how many different ways can you arrange those letters using all the letters? It would be 26 factorial different ways of doing it. Okay. So suppose the questions were, you know, a little bit more, you know, more interesting combinations of letters. So suppose we had five letters to pick from, and just, you know, think of it as like five balls inside a, a bucket, and they each have a letter A, a, through, a through E on them. So you're given five letters, A, B, C, D, and E. How many ways can we choose two letters where the order doesn't matter from the five letters? So we're going to just kind of like recursively use stuff now that we've already learned. So you're basically saying, how many different ways can we pick two balls out and then have that be our output set? How many different ways can we do that? 
So, um, um, well, one way we could, well, first we have just any off the top of your head way to solve this one. Um, first, I would use five. Right, five. Because there's five different. You can pick any five one as your first ball. Yeah. And, and then, then you can pick any four from the second one. the second one. So five times four should be uh, 20, 20 different ways. Right, and then the last letters don't matter. Right. Well, no. So, so not not kind of like doing a take every permutation oh. analysis. You you would do right intuitively. You would take five times. Could there's five different ways you could pick your first ball, yep. and then four ways for the second. So five times four would be twenty. So that, would, that would, should be the answer. If you wanted to, if they would, if we were to go down the road road where the questions aren't so easy to do it that way, one thing we could do is say, well, if we took all five letters and took every permutation of them. So we know how many permutations there are for five letters. That would be five factorial. So there's mm -hmm. 120 different ways yes. to arrange these five letters. But, for example, in those, out of that set of 120 ways of doing it, these would be one, two, three, four, five, six. This would be 12 different ways that would come out in that set, in, in that permutation. And if we're only looking at the first two that we pick out, here we have AB, then followed by CDE, AB, followed by... So these are all the ways it starts with AB and then all the different ways that you could have the last three letters arranged. Mm -hmm. We don't want to... If we were to say the answer was 120, 5 factorial, we've, ad we've added a lot of duplicates to our answer. The duplicates is, for every one that starts with A and B, there's really six different ways that it could finish. And we don't want to count that six times. We'd like to actually, if we're going to use this, 120 permutations, we kind of want to divide by six because six of them are really repeats we don't care about. The other thing is there's a case where it starts with a B and an A. And to us, an A and a B and a B and an A, the order doesn't matter. So we'd also like to divide that answer by two. So, um... So, we could say that there's 120 permutations, but we want to, we don't want to say 120 is the answer, we want to then divide by 6, meaning how many different permutations are there for C, D, and E? Six. And that would be, yeah, 3 factorial, yep. 6 different ways. So we would take the 120 and divide by 6, and then how many permutations are there for A and B and B and A? There's 2, 2 factorial. So we would divide that by 2 factorial. So wait a minute, so hold on. The answer we had originally is not right then. If you were to say there's five ways to get the first ball and then four ways to get the second ball, that would be 20. Mm -hmm. But um, if you pick the two balls but in different orders, you, you've counted them twice. You'd actually want to divide that answer by two. two. So actually 10 would be the answer if we did that one. Okay. So really what we want to do is we want to take the 120 permutations and then divide by the number of permutations of the letters we don't care about, and then also divide by the number of permutations of the letters we do care about because the order doesn't matter to us. So it would actually be 120 divided by 6 and then also divided by 2 should be our, our real answer. Okay, so there are two ways to list out A and B, two, really two factorial. If you took A and B, you could list them as A, B, or B, A. And there are three factorial ways of rearranging the remaining letters, C, D, and E. So if we were to count the five factorial ways of producing all five letters, we would then want to divide by two factorial and three factorial. So really, we take the number of permutations of A, B, C, D, and E, and then divide by the number of permutations of A times the number of permutations of C, D, and E. Okay. Like that. So this is going to build towards a, a pretty popular uh, formula in combinatorics. So if you were going to have five items and you're going to choose two of them, so here's like an example where we, we have originally have five items, we're going to pick two of them, and we want to know how many different ways can we pick two of them. 
at a 5. The number 5 will let that be n, and the number 2 will let that be r, the number, one, the number that we're picking. So the answer would end up being n factorial divided by the number that we're picking factorial, like 2 factorial, and then the number of things that we're not picking, which is all, all the items minus the ones we're picking, so all the ones we're not picking. And then that would be the, uh, the number of different ways we can pick the two items. So this is where R is the number of items you are choosing from the set N. Okay. So since this, you know, since this question comes up a lot, they kind of have a notation. They call this the binomial coefficient. So if you had a number n of items and you're going to choose r from that set, what it would end up being is you would take n factorial, which is really all the number of ways of arranging them, then divide by all the ways of arranging the ones you picked, because you don't want to count duplicates, mm -hmm. and also divided by all the number of ways you could arrange all the stuff you're not going to pick. And then that comes out, now if you think about it, that would be like, so n factorial is n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 all the way down to 1. But if we're going to divide by um, r factorial, we could subtract that off of the end of the factorial and then just go 1 to, we could go 1 to r, that's this one. And then n down to r, we could just subtract those off of the end of that factorial. So, for example, um, how many ways can we choose three unique letters from the alphabet? So if you had, you have 26 letters in the alphabet and you're going to just randomly pick three of them, it would end up being 26 factorial. There's 26 different ways to arrange the whole alphabet. Then you only care about the first three. So out of the first three, you want to divide out all the duplicates. So you divide by three factorial. And then of the other remaining 23 letters, you don't care about all the different arrangements of those, so you want to also divide by 23 factorial. So you can think of it as 26 times 25 times 24 all the way down to 1, divided by 1 times 2 times 3, and then also divided by 1 times 2 times 3 all the way up to 23. But so what we'd always see after here, we just kind of delete it off at the end of the top. So it's really 26 times 25 times 24, and then stop, and divided by r factorial, 1, 2, and 3. So really, this, is, this formula is really n factorial with the 1 to 23 missing, and this 23 factorial is missing. They each divide it from each other. So it's just a simple way of looking at this same expression. But it's probably more important to remember the top number is how many permutations you have, and the bottom number you're going to actually divide by 3 factorial and 26 minus 23, so 26 minus 3, which is 23 factorial also. But this is just a, an easy way to write it out. So again, so we have 26 items, we're choosing three of them, and we're asking how many different ways can we make that choice. So it would be 26 times 25 times 24 divided by 1 times 2 times 3, which in this case is 2,600. Okay. And then the idea of ordered partitions of a set. So, for example, uh, you're given the letters of the alphabet. How many ways can, can you choose um, unique letters um, as, how many ways can you choose unique letters as the first set and then from the remaining pick another two, another two letters. So this is just like kind of compounding the last example. So you, what you're going to do is you're going to pick three letters out of the alphabet, then you have 23 remaining letters, mm -hmm. and then you're going to pick a set of two more after that. So you're not picking out a set of five. No. You're first picking out one set of three, and then a second set of two. How many different ways can you do that? So here you're just kind of chaining it together. So to pick out the first three is 20, the binomial coefficient of 26 and 3. So it's really 26 factorial divided by 3 factorial divided by 23 factorial. Now you have 23 remaining letters, and you have 23 letters, you're going to pick two of them, and you don't care about the other remaining 21. So that would be 23 factorial divided by 2 factorial divided by 21 factorial. And that comes out to a big number. Okay, okay 
So, do you go to the racetrack at all? Uh, no. Yes, no? no? Okay. So, you can, uh, there's many ways to bet on a race that, that they allow at the racetrack. And one is a uh, win, which means out of all the horses in the race, you have to pick the one that wins, mm -hmm. the one that comes in first place. You can bet place, which means your horse can come in first place or second place. A lot of people think it must come in second place. That's not true. If it comes in first place, you win, or second place, you win. And then show is your horse can come in first place, or second place, or third place. So the or is, or is important in this example. So suppose you have a race that had 16 horses in it, and uh, the 16 horses all had an equal chance of winning. So that's not really true in real horse racing. Some horses are better than the other, but... Let's just assume all the horses had an equal chance of winning. So if you bet a horse to win, what is the chance you will win? One. If you picked a horse and they all had an equal shot and there's 16 of them, it would be 1 16. If you bet a horse to play, it's meaning your horse must come in first place or second place, you'd have 2 out of 16, and first place or second place or third place would be 3 out of 16. So yeah, that would be if the horses all had an equal shot of of coming in any final position. Okay, so yeah, hopefully those those are straightforward. So now there's a bet called an exacta. There's a bet you can make for a particular horse race. And what that means is you have to pick two horses and you have to get you have to pick the winner and not or and the second place horse. So if the horses were numbered one through uh, sixteen, you could say like number three is gonna win and number nine is gonna come in second place. If anything else happens, you lose. If three comes in first place and someone else comes in second and nine comes in third, you lose. Even though you were very close, you lose. You have to get the winner and the second place loss. You have to get both. So what is the chance, if all the horses were evenly matched, what is the chance, how many different ways can the first place and the second place horse come out? So you have 16 to pick from, you're gonna pick a first place horse, and then from the remaining 15, you're going to pick a second place horse. Mm -hmm. And the order matters. So the questions we did a little bit earlier, the order didn't matter. Now in this case, the order matters. So it's 16 pectoral times 15 pectoral? No, no. So just what, like, what is the chance out of 16 horses, what is the chance you could pick the winner? That one alone. That's one out of 16. Yes. And so then one out of 15. Right. And then the chance you will also, in addition to that, get the second place horse is one out of the remaining 15. So that would be 16 times 15, which is 240. Um, okay, now there's a bet called the, an exactor box. Box ends up meaning you can make every combination of the bets. But what it basically means is you don't have, the order doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. you, you just name two horses, and as long as they both come in first or second, it doesn't matter which one's first, which one's second, as long as they're the top two mm -hmm. in any order, you would win. So what's the chance you would get that one right? That would end up, oh, I'm sorry, not the chances of it, how many different ways can that be done? It would be 16 horses can be in first place, and then the remaining 15 could be in second place, but since the order doesn't matter, you would divide by two because you've made two copies of everything that's a winner. So there's 120 different ways. So it's two times likely it'll happen. So the chance you would win would be one out of 240 if you had to guess the first place and the second place loss, and one out of 120 if you just have to guess the top two in any order. Okay, then they also have a trifecta bet where you have to pick, this is like... When you play sand shell? Well, no, it's not, you have to pick, uh, yeah, who comes in first, second, and third, but you have to get all three of them correct. So the probability or the, the number of combinations of a trifecta where you have to pick the first place and the second place and the third place would be 16 times 15 times 14. There's 3,060 different ways the top three could come out. So if all the horses had an equal shot, you'd have a one out of 3,360 chance of getting right, if it's a 16 horse race. If it's a five horse race, then it would just be five times four times three. So that would be a lot more likely you could get that, get that. And then the, uh, the trifecta box, meaning you don't have to get the order. The order doesn't matter. You, all six different ways it could come out, you would be considered a winner. So all you have to do is pick the first place horse, the second place horse, and the third place horse, but in any order. 
You don't have to get the order right. That would end up being 16 times 15 times 14. But then you would divide it by the six different combinations of it. One times two times three. So this is, again, the binomial coefficient. And that would be 560 different ways that you could pick three horses to be your top horse. And that's kind of what we were doing before. You have 16 horses and you have to pick three of them out of the set. You have to pick the correct three out of the set. How many different ways can you do that? It would be 16 factorial divided by 3 factorial divided by 13 factorial, which is 16 times 15 times 14 divided by 1 times 2 times 3. Okay. So the Super Bowl, for anyone who's not American, watching uh, the videos on YouTube, is you know the football, the American football, the final game of the year. And um, so the league is, is broken up into, it's 32 teams broken up into two halves, called the conference. And the winner of one conference, the winner out of one set of 16 teams plays the winner out of the other set. So they're disjoint sets. And so the question is, how many different combinations could you have of teams that go to a Super Bowl on any given year? So you have 16 from one set, the best one out of those teams goes to the Super Bowl, and 16 from another set, the best one out of those goes to the Super Bowl. So how many different combinations could there be? 16 times 16. Right, so there's 16 from one and 16 from the other, so there's 256 possible pairs of teams that could, that could play in the Super Bowl. And then... Um, before you get to the Super Bowl, uh, each of those two sets, the sets of 16, they call a conference. And so out of that conference, there's a championship game. Two teams make it to that conference championship game, and the winner goes to the Super Bowl. And two teams from the other conference get to their championship game, and the winner goes to the Super Bowl. So how many different ways can you have the final four teams, the two that go to the conference game on one set, and two that go for the conference game on the other set. What are all the possible four final teams? Out of a set of 32 teams, so the rules, you have to like kind of follow the rules. You have to break them into their sets and then apply these combinatorical analysis based on the sets. So we have 32 teams, but they're broken into two sets, 16 and 16. And then, of those 16, two out of the 16 any two of the 16, there's no special rules that say if this one makes it, this one can't. Any two of those teams can make it to their, that set's final game. So how many different sets of teams could make it to those, that final game on one set and how many on the other set? Then we'd multiply those two answers together. 16, 15, divided by 2. Right, but since we don't, since we don't care about the order, it's just the two teams. Yes. So it would be 16 times, so it would be the binomial coefficient of 16... So it would be 16 times 15 divided by 1 times 2. That would be for one conference. And then for every, team, for every one of those sets, we multiply it by the set of other two teams, which is 16 times 15 times 1 times 2. So there's 14,400 different ways you could get to the final four teams, starting with only 32 from the beginning. So if you wanted to, if you had to write software, like companies, there's a company up in uh, Edison, New Jersey that writes software for betting on, you know, who's going to win the World Series or the Super Bowl. And, all, and from the different combinations, if, they, if you had to uh, pick, well, if you had to pick the winner and the loser of the Super Bowl, or the two teams, there would be 256 choices. You'd have to pick one, or you could bet as many as you want. But if you wanted to create a pool that said, you have to name the final four teams, well, they do, you know, the NCAA in the brackets. If you had to guess the final four teams out of 32, there's this many final four teams out of, in the uh, football league, with 32, and basketball would be 64, so it would be a much higher number. It would be, uh, for basketball, the final 64 would be 64 times 63 divided by 1 times 2. Oh, no, but they don't have it broken up in half, but it would be whatever that number is. That's the, all the different... Wait, the final four, sorry, would be 64 times 63 times 62 times 61 divided by 1 times 2 times 3 times 4. That's all the possible final fours that you can pick. So that's why it's a lot of them. All these websites that say if you can pick the whole bracket, we'll give you a million dollars because the chance is like less than hitting the lottery uh, on those. So, uh, okay. 
Yeah, so that's really, that's, you know, kind of where this topic uh, le leads off. Um, it's just the idea of, you know, combinatorial analysis is basically where you're given sets of items, and then I guess the, more, the tricky, you know, if you want to pick subsets out of the set, you use the binomial coefficient and follow that computation. And then if the rules about the sets start saying, like in, like in football, you have a set of 32 teams, but they're split into two subsets, 16 and 16. And from one group comes a winner, and from the other group comes a winner. It's going to make the numbers go less. So if football wasn't organized that way, if it was just any of the 32 teams can make it to the Super Bowl, then, then how many different combinations would make it to the Super Bowl? So if you have 32 teams, and you want to pick two out of them, how many different ways can you pick two out of 32? That would be 32 times 31 divided by, by two. 1 times 2. But if they decide to break it into two half sets, that Absolutely. limits it, right? Yeah. So like, for example, the New York, what's your, you have a favorite football team? Giants. Okay, so the Giants could never play the Cowboys in the Super Bowl because yeah. they come from the same set. Mm -hmm. But the Giants could play the Jets, that's possible. Yeah. Not likely, but, but, uh, <laughs> but at least it's possible. Yeah. So by the fact that they have rules that they broke the set of 32 teams into two subsets, it makes the com less combinations possible. So it's just trying to like, I'm just trying to get the idea that don't just take the number and pick how many you're going to pick. If they're broken up into subsets, you have to treat each set separately and then multiply those answers. Okay, so yeah, so this kind of overlaps with probability because we'll have questions like what is the probability if you bet on a horse that you would win? So you'd say how many different possible ways are there and then it would be 1 divided by that and if you bought 10 tickets then it would be 10 divided by the number of possible outcomes. So this topic, you know, heavily overlaps probability. 